Good morning and welcome to our Sunday worship. This morning we are doing things a little different as today is the anniversary of the NHS founding day. And so our service this morning is going to focus on the NHS. A little bit of information for us. The National Health Service came into being on the 5th of July 1948. During post-war reconstruction, improving the health care of the nation was seen as crucial to the nation's recovery. It was a momentous achievement and, in spite of early professional resistance to some of the proposals, it was born of a national consensus. Everybody wanted the new service to work. The NHS was based on principles unlike anything that had gone before. It was financed almost entirely from central taxation. That the rich paid more than the poor for comparable benefits was regarded as a crucial part of the scheme. Everyone was eligible for care, even people temporarily resident or visiting the country. People could be referred to any hospital, local or more distant. Care was free at the point of use although prescription and dental charges were subsequently introduced. During the current pandemic, there has been so much national and local support for the NHS and its frontline workers. The emergence of the Thursday clap for carers was a significant experience in lockdown. There are, of course, so many people who are key workers outside of healthcare and the NHS. And indeed, as Clap for Carers continued, so it was followed by ways of recognising and applauding key workers in other sectors. Posters and box of chocolates were put out for the rubbish collectors, the postmen and women, and so many others. Taking time to focus on the NHS today in no way sets it above other key sectors. But it just gives us a chance to focus on and hear about one key area of life in our society. So this week I've had the huge privilege of speaking with five of our congregation members who work either in the NHS or the medical field to hear about their experience of work and faith. And we're going to hear from them later. But as we begin, we come to God in prayer. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Let us come to the Lord Jesus. Let us seek his rest. We pray together. We are here today, Lord, to worship you. As we bow our heads before you, we want to be amazed by your wisdom, bowled over by your love and completely lost in you. Lord, open our hearts to receive you in ways beyond whatever we could ask or even think. Amen. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Lord, be all else to me, save that thou
Bible reading today is from Romans chapter 12 and is being read for us by Anna Barker. So then my friends, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. And because of God's gracious gift to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you should. Instead, be modest in your thinking and judge yourself according to the amount of faith that God has given you. We have many parts in the one body and all these parts have different functions. In the same way, though we are many, we are one body in union with Christ and we are all joined to each other as different parts of one body. So we are to use our different gifts in accordance with the grace that God has given us. If our gift is to speak God's message, we should do it according to the faith that we have. If it is to serve, we should serve. If it is to teach, we should teach. If it is to encourage others, we should do so. Whoever shares with others should do it generously. Whoever has authority should work hard. Whoever shows kindness to others should do it cheerfully. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And so we are going to hear now from some of our church family who use the gifts that God has given them in the health sector. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Good morning. Can you tell us a bit about your history with the NHS? Okay, so I started my nurse training back in 1992. On qualifying, I moved across to Doncaster Royal Infirmary, where I spent the next six years. Uh, I then moved sideways and went to uh, North East Lincolnshire, which is Scunthorpe and Grimsby. Uh, and I worked in a job called Clinical Governance. From that, um, I moved back to Bradford and uh, initially I tried my hand to health visit in Anyway, I quickly realised I couldn't, went back to risk management at Bradford Royal Infirmary and then after about 18 months moved on to the children's wards at Bradford Royal Infirmary where I've been for the last four and a half years, five years in September and uh, I have to say it's great being a, a children's nurse, working with families, working with individuals, with kids. Um, has your job changed at all because of the COVID-19 uh, yes. situation? I was trained about 18 months ago to ensure that I could advise staff on what was an appropriate face mask to wear uh, to protect them should they be looking after COVID positive patients. Um, so consequently for the last two months 
uh, most of which I've been doing full time. I've been uh, doing face mask testing around the trust for a wide variety of staff from across the trust um, to make sure that everyone's got appropriate PPE to wear to protect them as they're in their working life. So often people describe caring professions like working in the NHS as a, a calling or a vocation. Do those words uh, resonate for you in your experience? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, but then again, isn't every job in its own way a calling or a vocation? Because we all can do different things and we're all able to do different things. But there are certain jobs that we, we know full well that actually I couldn't do that. I couldn't work with that type of person or I couldn't work with that type of person. As a paediatric nurse, um, I know I can work with kids. So one of the things that has been happening over the last few months is, is having this clap for carers and clap for the NHS and all these rainbows and signs out. Um, can you share a little bit about how that might have impacted you? Um, I think for the first few weeks of the clap for carers, um, I wasn't particularly aware of it other than from seeing it on social media. But I was finding myself, I was finishing work at eight, usually later than eight, so I didn't actually see it directly. Certainly the first two or three times when I saw it in the street, um, in, in my own street as a as sort of, as I was, wasn't working at that time, it was a very emotional experience. Um, and, and it filled, filled you with a lot of pride. Um, however, there was, there, was a, there was a big push on it being about the NHS. And I think my only sort of thought would be that we're not the only key workers. There's lots and lots of people out there that have worked tirelessly and have put themselves out there on the line. It's, it's not just about the NHS. It's about the country as a whole and all those that have been working um, because the, those businesses that are essential, they're all key workers. Well, thank you for talking to us, Paul. You're very welcome. In our prayers today, we're going to take a few moments to remember each of the precious people that are going to be sharing with us as part of our service this morning. And as we pray for them, we're going to light a candle for each one of them, a symbol of our hope and our prayer that the light of Christ would continue to warm their hearts and lead and guide them in their vocation as they serve. So we've just heard from Paul. So as we begin our praying this morning, uh, we light our first candle uh, for Paul. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Paul, for his heart to help, for his humility and his depth of care and concern for all people. We thank you for his work as a paediatric nurse, for his care for children and their families. We thank you for his sense of fun and his ability to get alongside others. We ask that you would inspire him and fill him with fresh energy and joy in his vocation. God of healing and compassion, we thank you for the establishment of the National Health Service and for the dedication of all who work in it. Give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who care for the sick. Strengthen them in their vocation through your spirit, that through their work, many will be restored to health and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So welcome, Vicky. We're really pleased that you've uh, been able to take some time to talk to us. For I've worked for the NHS since I was about 19, in, which is in the early 1990s. Uh, when I went to do my nurse training um, over in Lancashire. Um, so now I work for Bradford University. Um, so for the last two years I've lectured nursing students um, and prepared them for a career within the NHS. And I've always been very proud of working for the NHS. I've had career opportunities outside the NHS in private healthcare organisations. I've always said and I um, I want to work for the NHS. 
how does your faith impact or help you in your work? As, as a registered nurse, I have a code of conduct that I have to adhere to. And part of that code is that I can't um, put my values upon other people. I'm not allowed to overtly um, um, talk about my faith. My faith is part of who I am. And hopefully that, that, will, um, that part of my faith and my, my love of God um, comes across through me as love for other people. Um, there is one situation that, I, that really sticks in my mind from probably about, probably about 15, 20 years ago now when I was a sister on the um, medical admissions unit in Blackpool. And there was a gentleman who'd come in and he'd had a cardiac arrest. And we'd, we'd, um, he'd, we'd got him back round, we'd, we'd, um, we'd saved him. But he was still really sick. And it was likely that he was gonna have another cardiac arrest um, and not make it. And I just felt, despite my code, <laughs> I just felt really drawn uh, to say something to this man. and. When there was no one about, I just said, you know, can, can I ask you, um, do you know Jesus? And, uh, and he, he was really struggling to breathe and he just said, and he just grabbed my hand and he said, no, can you help me? And I said, would you like to know Jesus? And, and he was just, please help me. Um, and because he asked, then I, then I prayed with him and, um, and hopefully... You know that that man is is uh, rejoicing in heaven now because he did he didn't make it through the night. Um, so I think there are times when you just know, and there's just that that still small voice saying, "Come on, you, you know you've got to do is put your ne put your neck on the line here. You've got a job to do." Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And um, thank you for chatting to us, Vicky. It's been really great to hear about um, what you do and your experience of the NHS, um, so thank you. You're welcome, thank you. So having just heard from Vicky, we light our next candle as our prayer for Vicky. Praying that the light and the love of Christ would shine in her heart today. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Vicky, for her calm nature, for her open heart and mind. We thank you for her gift of teaching, her commitment to training students and her inspiring others in their vocation. We thank you for her clarity of mind and her rich communication skills. We thank you for her many years of frontline work as a nurse in the NHS. We ask that you would inspire her and fill her with fresh energy and joy in her vocation. Gracious God, we lift to you all who have stepped forward in these last few months to offer themselves to help. We give thanks for those whose students who have moved into frontline healthcare, asking for your strength and resilience for them as they begin their vocation. We pray for those who have not been able to do that and who carry guilt for needing to shield at home or stay at home to look after others. We ask that you would give them peace and encouragement in the decisions that they have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we're now we're joined by uh, Catherine Short to tell us a bit about her work. Um, well, I was late starting as a nurse, so I didn't start my training until I was 29. When I first qualified, I worked in haematology which is all to do with different blood disorders and blood cancers and things like that. Then I went to work at Leeds Prison for nine months as a nurse, which was very interesting, to say the least. Very challenging in di for different reasons. Um, and then I got a post in rheumatology as a clinical nurse specialist, and that's what I do still now. 
Um, and has your job uh, changed at all during uh, the COVID-19 situation? Yeah, it's changed massively because um, we used to do a lot of, well, we, we're what we call an outpatient-based service, so we don't have inpatient beds. Um, a lot of the conditions that we deal with, we can manage in an outpatient setting um, because of the medications that we use, we, we don't have to have them as inpatients. Um, so everything we do is in a, in a clinic, face to face, um, and that's had to stop completely because um, we're trying to reduce the amount of people coming into hospital. So a lot of it's done over the telephone or via video link, which is, is tricky. It's tricky to do. Okay, can I ask, um, how does your faith impact or help you in your work? It, is, it, it gives me a moral compass in a way. It's, it's quite easy to just slip into the mainstream of thinking of, 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 of blame, I suppose, in a way. I think, you know, well, that's somebody else's fault or, um, or you know, it's hard to describe, really. It, it, sometimes you can get on the, the wheel of thinking you have, what you have to have in mind and what you actually need in mind. And it just helps it, it, just helps you to focus more about what really is important and what really isn't. Having the next best, the next best thing isn't going to give you that fulfilment that sometimes you crave. Uh, so I've just got a question about um, the the clap for carers, the clap for the NHS, people uh, really encouraging and, and producing support. Um, and as someone who works in the NHS, how has that felt for you? It, it was nice, it was really nice just to see people coming out as, what, as, a, as a big force to show their appreciation. Keeping up to show my appreciation as well for everybody who works hard, not just in the NHS, but you know, supermarket, some people work in supermarkets, work in pharmacy, um, bus drivers, taxi drivers, you know, there's lorry drivers, there's lots of other people out there who are doing just as good a job. And it's nice to show me appreciation that way as well. I'm a big chat to me in August. That's cool. Thank you so much. So having heard some insights from Catherine, we now light our next candle for Catherine. Praying that the light of Christ would shine in her heart today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Catherine for her joyful, cheerful nature, always ready to have a go and always happy to join in with others. We thank you for her adaptability and the different strands of nursing she has worked in. We ask that you would inspire her and fill her with fresh energy and joy in her vocation. Gracious God, we thank you for the many areas of healthcare that have carried on through this crisis, providing remote support and care to people. As the NHS begins to reopen outpatient departments, non-urgent operations and procedures and other areas, we ask for your strength to sustain staff and your peace to fill those who are anxious to come forward with their health needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we're now going to have a chat with Sarah Holding about her experience of what she does as work. Uh, so Sarah, can you tell us a bit about your job and what you do? Yes, so I'm a technician working at the University of Leeds in the Department of Medicine and Health. Um, so our department trains um, student doctors and dentists um, clinical skills. So it's things that they need to practice and learn before they can practice on patients. So things such as life support, blood taking, injections, those sorts of things. So my role is very varied, um, but my main responsibilities are for of technical support for both staff and students, helping train them on the equipment, um, organisation of courses, um, involving volunteer patients in courses that we run. Um, it's, yeah, very varied. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can I ask uh, whether your work has changed at all because of COVID-19? Yes, so it has changed a lot. The biggest change personally for me is the fact that I've been home-based since March. 
Um, so juggling homeschooling and work um, from home. Um, up until recently, um, our department has remained open, but the retraining of doctors who were going back into the front line. Um, so I've been helping support online learning for students and they're due to come back in a week's time. So the main part of my role has been sourcing PPE and getting all the students uniform and writing policies for infection control for when they do return so that it's as safe as possible. How does your faith impact or help you in your work? It helps me hugely in my work. It can be, it's always very hectic. So from the minute you enter till I leave, it's always very hectic, which can be a good thing, but it can be challenging. And it's always a good reminder when things are demanding that we're working for the Lord, not just for people and organisations. And that can sort of refocus um the mindset and to be able to pray throughout my day when things are tricky is a huge huge help i'm um my colleagues often describe me as being a very patient person and my family would <laughs> disagree with that <laughs> patience does not come easily to me and i always feel that is the lord helping me throughout my day because that doesn't come naturally but, um, you know, I pray and trust to respond in the right way to when things are hectic and demanding. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing with us a bit of what your day to day work looks like, Sarah. Thank you. So having just heard from Sarah, we now light our next candle for Sarah, praying today that the light of Christ would shine brightly in her heart to give her hope and peace. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Sarah, for her gentle, peaceable, calming nature, for her patience, for her honesty, for her leaning into you, for her guiding and equipping. We thank you for her work in training others, sourcing PPE and adjusting to a challenging pattern of working from home. We ask that you would inspire her and fill her with fresh energy and joy in her vocation. Gracious God, we thank you for the many people who work in the background outside the NHS, providing essential support, training and equipping. At this time, we lift to you the many people who have had to adjust to work being different this year and have, yet, and have done so with patience and skill. We pray for your strength for them as this continues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So now we're going to speak to Rachel Barker. Thanks for joining us, Rachel. Can you tell us a bit about your time with the NHS, what you're doing at the moment? So I'm a junior doctor in the NHS and I'm training to be a GP. Um, so I've been a doctor now for nearly five years and worked on various wards in different hospitals. Uh, but I've, just before this all started, I moved to a general practice surgery. And has, has what you've been doing changed a lot? Yeah, really dramatically. I think out of all the, well, in GP especially, things have really changed. Um, I think we've got a completely different way of working now. So what drew you into working for the NHS? Well, I suppose I wanted to do something where, which was meaningful, being part of people's lives. Um, and just being part of their life's journey um, and with my parents having a medical background it sort of seems a normal thing to do and a way of doing that. I think I realise now there's loads of different jobs where you could do that but um, at the time I thought yeah it felt like it was the right thing. Yeah. 
how does your faith impact or help you in your work? I think especially during this time it's really helped. It's given me a, another focus in, in in life rather than my job. It's given me a chance to unwind uh, and also a sense of being back at home because I haven't been able to go back home uh, during the lockdown period. So it's nice to connect and be part of the church family. I get a lot of comfort from having a faith because it, it's nice to know in some ways that we don't, um, that as humans we don't know everything, we can't control everything and sometimes we just need to put our trust in God. And How has the clap for the carers that made you feel as somebody working in the NHS that people are getting out on their doorsteps and clapping for you once a week? Well, to begin with, it, you, know, it, you know, it makes you feel quite, you know, touched and emotional. Uh, at the time, sometimes I felt a bit embarrassed, though, because I thought, well, I'm just doing, you know, doing what you normally do. And at the time, we weren't particularly busy at work, uh, probably the least busy I've ever been. Uh, and uh, But I thought about my friends in London and, and in, on intensive care. Um, uh, and I, well, I was sort of clapping for them myself because I knew that their rotors had completely changed and that they were really in the thick of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for giving me some time, particularly when you've just got home. And so having just heard from Rachel, we now light our fifth candle as we remember Rachel, as we pray for the light of Christ to shine in her life today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Rachel, for her radiant and joyful being. We thank you for her commitment and hard work as she trains to qualify as a GP. We ask that you would bless her with your peace and your courage as she grows in experience. And we ask that you would inspire her and fill her with fresh energy and joy in her vocation. And we particularly pray for Rachel and her fiancé Sam at this time, as they've just had to postpone their wedding. We ask that you would bless them in their time of waiting and bind them in your love. And Lord Jesus, we give thanks today for Rachel's mum and dad, Anna and Philip, and their lifetime vocation as GPs. And also we pray for and give thanks for Rachel's sister, V, also working as a doctor in the NHS. We pray you would inspire her and fill her with fresh energy and joy in her vocation. Gracious God, we thank you for all those who work in general practice, for their continued work amid challenging circumstances. We pray for all those who will slowly begin to return to a normal way of working, where people can come and be seen in person. We pray for wisdom, safety and compassion to make the right decisions about who to see. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we have all five candles lit now as we give thanks to God for each of those that we have shared with uh, today. What a joy it's been, hasn't it, to hear just a little bit of their stories, of their journeys, of their vocation and calling. They are representatives for us today of all those who work or who have worked in the NHS over the last 72 years. What an amazing blessing the NHS is. Hugely overstretched, but possibly the best healthcare system in the world. But also, Helpful to remember today, as our people humbly uh, said, that this isn't simply about them. There are so many people in so many areas of life who work tirelessly for the good and the benefit of others. 
using their God-given gifts, the body of Christ at work in God's world today. For each one of them, we are thankful. May the light and the love of Christ shine brightly and bring hope and healing through each and every one. We continue now as we join together and sing this beautiful song as we sing we proclaim our faith in Christ. This I believe. proclaimed our faith in the words of this song that we've just sung, 
we pause now as we recognise we don't always do and say the things that bring hope and healing. We pause before God not to be chastised but to be renewed by God's grace as we put down our disappointments, our brokenness, our waywardness and turn our lives afresh toward God, asking God to turn us around, as it were, and set us afresh on our journeys of life and faith. So let us pray. Lord, when our actions are not loving, and we think of just ourselves, your name is not glorified. Forgive us, God of glory. When our words bring hurt to others, when we do not even notice, your name is not glorified. Forgive us, God of glory. When the way we live is selfish and we find no time for you, your name is not glorified. Forgive us, God of glory. When we do not see you or reveal your love, your name is not glorified. Forgive us, God of glory. Forgive and renew us and let your glory be seen in our lives. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Hello and welcome to St Mary's Church. It's great to have you here and to celebrate communion for the first time with our new carpet and also surrounded by all of the things that are out getting ready to provide uh, cook and eat sessions for families uh, in Leicester Dyke. Absolutely fantastic to have the communion table in the midst of all of this community love and care that's going on. So let's worship God as we, as we share in this great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord is with us wherever we are. The Spirit of God moves among us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It's right to pra praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all.
as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we share these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour has taught us, so together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for you. Amen. And we pray together, O oh God, may our lips proclaim your praise and testify to the good news you bring. You are our great and awesome God, whose word does great and awesome deeds. We are privileged to be part of your story, to be precipitants of your love and grace. We praise you, God of heaven and earth, we give you all the glory. Amen. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea
To our final prayer and blessing. May we live to love and to serve. May we bring healing. May we bring peace. May we live in the presence of the Father, in the power of Jesus, united by the Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be among us and remain with us always. Amen. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough.